Hey guys, I'm Tom the Tech Chap, and this is the new OnePlus 11. And this has to be good. Seriously, OnePlus needs to win us back after years of incremental upgrades, confusing lineups, price rises, and just a lack of support. They've lost their edge, what made them special. So, OnePlus sent over this big red box with both the OnePlus 11 review sample and also these new OnePlus Buds Pro 2 in this very fancy arbor green color. And these will cost you around £179. And these are one of the first true wireless studio earbuds to actually adopt Google's signature spatial audio feature, which was developed for Android 13. Very nice. But really, I'm here for this guy. Can this put them back on track? Well, the answer is yes. I'm happy to report the OnePlus 11 is actually a terrific phone. Flagship specs with the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2, faster RAM and storage, a much improved main camera, great battery life, they've doubled their Android support to four years, the alert slider is back, and it undercuts the big dog, starting at $699 or 729 pounds, which makes it a whopping 120 quid less than the cheapest Galaxy S23, and the same for the Pixel 7 Pro, which is a big plus for the OnePlus. I will tell you now that this is not perfect. I do have a couple of issues, which I'll come to in a second. Uh, and also I need to spend more time with this and the new Galaxy S23 and the Pixel 7 Pro and some of the uh, competition to see if this really is the best buy at this price point. So uh, I'll make another video soon. But what I can tell you right now is this is definitely worth considering. Side by side with its two predecessors, the 10 Pro and the 10T, you can see it shares a pretty similar size and design. It definitely shares more of its DNA with the 10 Pro as we see the return of the alert slider, the selfie hole punch is back in the corner, and we do have this curved screen, which I know not everyone is a fan of. I must admit, I did quite like the flat edges of the 10T. But the 11 is kind of like the 10 Pro and the 10T made sweet love together and it created a child because we have the sort of all round higher specs, the nicer screen, the better camera of the 10 Pro with the performance uh, and also a little bit more of the affordability of the 10T. So really this is the sort of culmination of these two phones, uh, but also with a new processor and a better camera. It comes in the usual black and green options, although I must admit, I do think black would look better. This kind of darker, glossy green looks a little bit plasticky. I kind of wish they'd gone back to a matte finish, but it's still a good looking phone. And as the cliche goes, it feels good in the hand. We get stereo speakers, although no headphone jack or micro SD card support. And we do get some water and dust resistance with an IP55 rating, but not quite as resistant as most rivals. Similarly, the front uses Gorilla Glass Victus, although not the latest Victus Plus, and on the back we have the slightly older Gorilla Glass 5. So there are some cost cutting measures there, but it's not really a big deal. What is a big deal though, is this gets the new Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 chip, and that's also combined with faster LPDDR5X RAM and also UFS4 storage. And the tech nerds among you are like, oh, that's pretty interesting. And everyone else is just like, okay, great. But it means the chip, the RAM and the storage are all considerably faster than before. And even before I throw a benchmark at this, I can tell you it feels incredibly fast to use. Although Oxygen OS 13 also has a part to play in that. So just how fast is this new OnePlus 11? Well, let's put it to the test. And in my 20 minute 3D Mark Wildlife Extreme stress test, it's 38% faster than the 8 Gen 1 in the 10 Pro and 30% faster than the 8 Plus Gen 1 in the 10T. Now the stability score is lower, so it's throttling more, although really only at the end of the test, but the scores are consistently higher. And we're looking at a bump from 22 to 27 frames per second. And it's more efficient. The same test used 7% of the battery on the 10 Pro, 4% on the 10T, and 3% on the 11. So that's all well and good, but one issue I have had with OnePlus phones in the past, and it's not exclusive to OnePlus, but I have experienced this, is a gradual slowdown in performance, especially after like a couple of years, but hopefully not anymore because they've actually certified this with TUV Sued and their 48 month performance test, and it got an A rating, uh, whatever that means, I assume it's good. Uh, now I haven't actually heard of TUV Sued before, I presume that's the South version of TV Rhineland, uh, but generally they are a very uh, reputable certification company. And the idea is a bit like we had with the durability tests with folding phones, but with this they'll really intensely use the hardware and see if there's any performance degradation over time. Now obviously I'm not going to know the results for the next two, three, four years with regular use, uh, but hopefully, fingers crossed, it does have an impact and this does maintain its high performance for a much longer period than some of the previous OnePlus phones. The thing is though, while the extra few FPS in demanding games is always welcome, a stable 60 in Apex and Genshin is definitely impressive, but it can be hard to notice that difference in everyday use. Versus the old 10 Pro, apps open maybe half a second quicker. It's just about noticeable, but only as I have them side by side. And there's really nothing in it versus the 10T. 
However, if you are a gamer, or you edit 4K videos, maybe in Premiere Rush on your phone, or just want the most future-proof tech, then it probably is worth it. But OnePlus phones are already incredibly slick and fast, and that is largely down to Oxygen OS. We're now on the 13th version, which sits on top of Android 13, and while we've been seeing the convergence of Oppo and OnePlus over the last couple of years, I mean, Warp Charge fully went out the window, and now it's Super VOOC, and for a while we did think the OnePlus would get Color OS instead, I must admit I am happy to see Oxygen OS is as fast as ever, and there's some really nice customization options. Everything from changing the font, to the icons, to the fingerprint reader animation, the always-on display, and also, in supported apps, if you do a three-finger swipe up from the bottom, it opens up split-screen mode, which can come in handy, or if you just want to completely overwhelm your senses with all the content. And it's the little things too. The haptic motor has a really satisfying vibration to it. And I love the alert slider. Switching from ring to vibrate to silent without looking or while it's in your pocket is really useful. So yes, the jump in performance versus last year's phones isn't that significant, outside of benchmarks or the most demanding games, uh, but chances are you're upgrading from a phone that's two or three years old, and from that, this is going to be a real step up. I'm bringing these in again because I want to go back to talking about the battery, because all three have the same size 5,000 mAh cell, which is a really good sized battery. Now after five hours of YouTube, with all phones set to Full HD+, and about 50% brightness, the 10 Pro is down to 72%, the 10T is at 77 and the 11 wins with 79% remaining. So I reckon I can bump the resolution up to Quad HD, or more realistically keep it on the auto switch mode, while getting a similar battery life to the 10T, which is limited to Full HD. And considering the 10T came fourth in my big battery rundown test, only losing out to the iPhone 14 Plus, the Origin Phone 6, and by just a couple of minutes, the 12T Pro, I was already really impressed by the battery life. And the 11 improves on that further, so battery life is a real selling point here, and you'll comfortably get a day and a half of normal use. It's not all down to the new chip though, because this is actually using a brand new LTPO 3.0 screen. Uh, we've had LPTO for a couple of years now, and that basically means it can uh, dynamically adapt the refresh rate based on what's on the screen. If you're gaming at 120, you'll get 120, uh, but if you're just watching YouTube videos at 30, it'll go down to 30 to save battery life. But with this new 3.0 tech, it's basically just faster and even more efficient. And the always on display only uses one hertz. So that also contributes towards preserving the battery life. Now in the box, along with the phone, obviously, and a SIM ejector tool, although no uh, clear plastic case with this OnePlus uh, for whatever reason, which is a bit of a shame. We do get a power adapter and also, of course, OnePlus's famous red cable, and this is a 100 watt Super VOOC charger. So uh, you'll be able to top up your OnePlus 11 up to 75% in just 15 minutes or 25 minutes for a full charge. However, once again, this does not support wireless charging, uh, and therefore, of course, any kind of reverse charging either, which is disappointing. On a phone this expensive in 2023, the lack of wireless charging is a shame. Going back to the screen though, because aside from the LTPO3 tech, the display hasn't really changed that much. It's still a great looking 6.7 inch Quad HD 120Hz AMOLED, same 1300 nit peak HDR brightness, which is pretty typical at this price point, but doesn't quite hit the 1800 or 2000 nits from the super duper flagship rivals. But what is new for this year is support for Dolby Vision HDR, on top of HDR10 Plus that we already get. And we should be seeing an update for the Netflix app adding support for Vision soon as well. Right, camera time. And I brought the 11 with me to Paris for a nice little long weekend with Mrs. Tech Chap, and on the whole, I've got to say, it's a lot better than I expected, although I do have a couple of issues. So the phone packs in a triple lens setup with a 50 megapixel main, a 48 megapixel ultra wide, which also doubles as a very impressive macro, and finally a 32 megapixel portrait telephoto lens. As they reckon, the main reason you'd use your zoom is for the better focal length for portraits, not for actually taking regular zoomed in photos. And I'm inclined to agree, actually. So switching to the portrait mode, you have one times and two times options. And in good light, portraits can look really nice. Although I do find sometimes, in or out of portrait mode, the OnePlus can lean towards a flatter, cooler look, especially with skin tones, which can sometimes look a little bit unnatural. Photography can of course be very subjective, and OnePlus have once again teamed up with Hasselblad, and while it continues to only be a software rather than hardware deal, their fancy natural color calibration is now utilized in all aspects of the camera, whereas previously it was just limited to the Pro mode, which was a bit useless for most of us. Now on the whole, I'm actually very impressed with the OnePlus 11's camera. Photos are rich in detail, we get impressive dynamic range, and also thanks to the new spectral sensor, the white balance is on point most of the time. In low light, a lot of phones can struggle with strong, often tungsten lighting, and end up overcompensating and going too cool and too white. Whereas I found the OnePlus does a really good job, even in tricky conditions. 
I was also kind of blown away by how good the macro is. By default, it'll switch to the macro, which uses the ultra wide when you get really close up to your subject. And these are some of the best close up shots I've seen in a long time. One criticism I do have with the camera is the shutter speed still seems to be on the slower side compared to some rivals, particularly in lower light. So any movement can cause your subject to be a little bit blurry. Switching over to video, and I would say this is a noticeable step up in quality as well. Sadly, there aren't any new modes. It still tops out at 4K 60 or 8K 24. I'm surprised there isn't an 8K 30 here, but the 4K 30 video I shot with this came out really nicely, and the OIS and EIS combination does a great job smoothing everything out, even at night, which is much trickier. In fact, shooting video with the AI highlight mode turned on is particularly impressive. I love this shot of rainy Paris. I mean, it's not flawless, but for the money and compared to most Android phones, I'm definitely taken aback by how good this looks. So altogether, great for photography, solid portrait shots, sharp and stable video, but it is let down by the selfie camera, which actually seems to be a downgrade even from last year's 10 Pro with a lower end IMX 471 sensor versus the 615 before, and also 16 megapixels down from 32. It also still lacks autofocus and in terms of selfie video, it's okay, but I just can't get over the fact that we're still limited to 1080p full HD on a 2023 flagship phone with a Snapdragon 8 Gen 2, all that power. I just don't understand OnePlus. Why is it still 1080p? So let's wrap this up. Is the OnePlus 11 actually worth buying? Well, short answer, yes. Long answer, also probably yes, although let's see what some of the other phones can do as well this year. For £729, I think the pricing is really competitive, although less so in Europe, which is about €849. Euros. That is a bit more expensive. But for £729, we get great specs, a really good main camera that takes some lovely portrait shots, terrific battery life, a smart design, Dolby Vision is a nice upgrade to the screen. Downsides, well, no wireless charging is a bit of a bummer. Also, the IP rating is a little bit average. I also don't love the look and feel of this. I would definitely go with the black one if I was going to buy it. And also not everyone loves a curved screen. More importantly though, the selfie camera still leaves a lot to be desired, especially with video. And also it would have been nice to have a proper telephoto camera. And in low light, I still think it struggles a little bit compared to some of the flagship competition. And even last year with the 10 Pro and the 10T, it was kind of confusing. Which one's better? Why am I compromising on some things? Why is that one cheaper? It was a mess. But the good news, at least in my opinion, is that I think this is putting them back on track. The OnePlus 11 is definitely worth considering. But actually, what really stands out to me is just that they're doubling down on support for these phones. Now that we have this four-year guaranteed performance and the doubling of their Android support from two, which was pitiful, to four years. And that, for me, is a really big deal. But what do you reckon? Would you be tempted to buy the OnePlus 11? Can they win you back? Let me know what you make of this in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching, guys. If you want to see more from me, a little like and subscribe would be lovely. And I'll see you next time right here on the Tech Chat.